How's it going, all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of collected editions. And today I'm going to be talking about where to best start reading Marvel comics in collected editions, graphic novel format. So stay tuned. Now, before getting started, if you're enjoying these type of videos and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button, ring that bell for notifications, and more importantly, please, everyone, hit that like button. That is a very small thing you can do, but it goes a long way for us here on the channel. Uh, so today I have brought back the Where to Begin series. It's where I go and talk about books that I suggest to people for their new reads, if they're inter uh, if they're interested in a particular character because of a movie, a video game, whatever the reason may be, or to gift people. Now, this list was difficult because I've talked about how, for me, this was my first comic, and this is Uncanny X-Men 168. And I would love to know what your first Marvel comic was, by the way. Leave those comments down below. And what you would get people to read if you were to uh, hand people a list of 20 books or 10 books or five Marvel books as their first Marvel comic to get them into this world and get them hooked. Uh, so yes, this list is not the best of, it's not the essential reads, it's not, it's not even some of my favorite comics, but I do agree in the importance of them and how easy people got hooked because of these books. So it was kind of hard to put together, but I limited myself to 20. And in here, you're gonna see different reasons as to why I chose these books whether it's the beginning of something uh, or whether it is because people are familiar with the character and they want to get more and more involved with these particular characters. So that's uh, this list was a little hard to do, I'm not going to lie. But I realized that my I, the, I was so hesitant to start this particular series because I grew up in the 80s and my mentality was like, any comic can be anyone's first comic. But I realized we're in a world of collected editions. It's so much easier to go, hey, you want a, a hardcover or a trade paperback that can get you into this character? I got you. Instead of hunting down all these back issues. Although there is something magical about that. So, yes, Uncanny 168 from the Ashes. First appearance of Madeline Pryor. Kitty Pride going all badass. And Lockheed. Now, uh, yeah, I would love to know what your first Marvel comic is. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I do put these in chronological order and the reasoning behind each one. Fantastic Four by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. I'm gonna go all the way to the beginning of what a lot of us call the Marvel Age, Silver Age. Now I skipped the Golden Age because a lot of those books were anthologies besides Captain America. But I feel like with Fantastic Four, you get the beginning of everything. You get the beginning of the Marvel Age that spreads into Spider-Man. From there, you get Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, Ant-Man, Wasp, the Avengers, Captain America, X-Men, because of this book. But you also get, and the more you read this, an introduction to the dark side of Marvel, an introduction to the cosmic side of Marvel. If you make it all the way to the Galactus saga, oh my gosh, but absolutely 100% little bit of a slow burn because it is a Silver Age book, but I can't think of a better introduction to this wonderful world of Marvel comics than starting at what a lot of us think is the very beginning of superheroes. And that's why I went with this. Not my favorite run, but it's up there. It's in my top five. Now it is available in omnibus editions, in trade paperbacks, Marvel Masterworks, Epic Collections. Uh, Tashian released this big, beautiful, oversized hardcover books. Those are a little pricey, but my goodness, the ads in there and everything worth the experience of going back and traveling through time. But had to start it with the world's greatest comic magazine and Marvel's first family. God Loves Man Kills. Now this was my first Marvel family, obviously because of this uh, book right here. But I believe God Loves Man Kills puts everything that I love about the X-Men into one book. It is the epitome of what it is to be a mutant living in this world that hates you, yet you have to fight for their rights. It shows a side of Magneto that if you come from the world of... The, the cartoon, for example, you don't really get to see a lot of. Now, in the movies, yeah, you do get to see the side, but really, really because of Chris Claremont. I remember reading this when I was 12 years old, sitting in my bed, 
And I had no idea that X-Men could get this dark. I had no idea that there was a maturity level of X-Men like this. This was originally released as a graphic novel all the way back in 1982. But it has been reprinted. We've had trade paperbacks. We've had hardcovers. It's in uh, the Uncanny X-Men Omnibus Volume 3. There's a gallery edition. Now, the gallery edition is censored, so it does black out a word. It's a derogatory word, uh, but it is censored out if you are interested in giving it to uh, a kid, you know, that just that wants to get into Marvel Comics and you don't want them to read certain words. But I feel like this encompasses everything that I love about the X-Men and Claremont just blew it out of the water. I love this story. It is, you'll see it again where I make my list of where to best start reading X-Men. Absolutely, 100%. Keeping in the X-Men family, Wolverine by Chris Claremont and Frank Miller. Both of these guys decided to team up and tell a story about Wolverine. Now, this is a completely different take on Wolverine than the way they were heading in Uncanny X-Men. He is rolling solo. He's going on adventures to Japan. Japan. Where you get to see a side of him, you don't get to see an Uncanny X-Men. Not up until here. In here, you get a little bit of his background. In here, you get to see a side of him not seen in the pages of Uncanny X-Men. Up until this point, you get to see a side of respect and honor that he has. He's a different type of character. He's a lot more complex than people thought at the time that he was just a killing machine. No, there's a lot of honor and complexity to the character of Logan, and it gets no better than this. And that artwork by Frank Miller, my goodness, is some stuff of legend, that is for sure. And you can find this wonderful story in the Wolverine Omnibus Volume 1. It's also available in Marvel Premiere Hardcover. There is many trade paperback editions of this particular book, so it is widely available. And it is, to me, not only one of the greatest Wolverine stories, but one of the best stories Marvel ever put out that is new reader friendly. And that's why I'm recommending this one for anybody that has any interest in Logan or the two Wolverine movies or the X-Men movies and has been a fan of Wolverine, but has never read the comics. We're not done with Frank Miller because we're talking about Daredevil. Now he has this definitive run. Again, this list is not the definitive runs on these characters or my favorite runs on these characters. Uh, but he did do an amazing job with his run. Like that, I think most people think of Daredevil, they probably think of Frank Miller, especially if they grew up in the 80s. Now, there was a series, because we're skipping all the way into the 90s, that he did. It was a five-issue miniseries called The Man Without Fear. That's been available in trade paperback, hardcover. It is part of the companion omnibus, the Daredevil companion omnibus by Frank Miller. Now, this one is drawn by John Romina Jr., and the idea behind this was to make this into a movie. This was an original movie script and when the movie failed marvel decided to ask frank miller hey why don't you break it down into five issues and make it into an origin story so that's exactly what this is this is the origin of matt murdoch uh, how he became daredevil there's a little bit of retcons but if it's your first time reading daredevil you won't even have to worry about that stuff because as far as your understanding he's always had electra there since his college years but it is a wonderful take on the character. You see him rise to the level that he um, became later on, the stuff of legend in Hell's Kitchen. And yes, absolutely 100% think that is a great entry point to Daredevil. You get the origin in here. You get great artwork by John Romita Jr. I love the way that he draws the kingpin, menacing big. And you get a story by Frank Miller, too, who a lot of us is the definitive writer on Daredevil. Marvels by Kurt Music and Alex Ross. I believe that this is a beautiful entry to the Marvel Universe. I will say that it might spoil some big storylines for you, like the story of the Green Goblin and Gwen Stacy, uh, the story of the coming of Galactus, but you get to see it from the perspective of an outsider, a non-superhero, a photographer, reporter. And it's such a cool idea. I remember lending this one to a couple of my friends when I was in college and they fell in love with the artwork. They fell in love with the idea of the character, just kind of being on the sides and experiencing all of this through our eyes pretty much. And I feel like this is a great introduction to all these classic stories. And you're not gonna be confused because the way Kurt Busiek writes, it's like he adds a certain nostalgia that you're supposed to have in you that you had no idea you had in you. 100% recommending Marvels. Available in trade paperback, hardcover, a big monster sized book. Uh, no gallery edition yet, but there was a platinum edition that's out of print. 
and there was a I believe there was a 25th anniversary and a 20th anniversary um yes but 100 percent. if you've not checked that one out and you're just now getting your toes wet in marble go back to that story it is classic for a reason we're not done with kurt busiek because we're going to be talking about avengers by busiek and george Pettis. now if you want to see how classic stories are written if you want to have that feel of a classic superhero story and don't want to go and read the silver age this is the book for you the series was relaunched and it introduces you to a huge cast of characters and the beauty of it is that you don't need to have known a big history as to who these characters were or are all you need to know is that these people are about to come together again to fight off evil and they are the avengers and the lineup is so awesome because you get a little bit of New Warriors in there. You get a little bit of X-Men in there uh, because of the ties that some of these characters have to those characters. So it expands your horizon as far as the Marvel Universe. Again, it's that classic storytelling, but done in the 90s. So not as dialogue heavy as the Silver Age books or Bronze Age books. But man, it is such a classic story. 100% recommending it. And of course... You're in luck because the Omnibus just came back to print. There are complete collections, oversized hardcover editions of this run. Uh, but the Omnibus came back to print, and hopefully there will be a reprint of the second Omnibus. So don't forget to vote on our Most Wanted Marvel Omnibus reprint poll coming in February. Because that's where you get to voice your opinion. Ultimate Spider-Man by Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Bagley. I struggled with Spider-Man. I kept going back and forth. Roger Stern. No, Peter David. Craven's Last Hunt. What is a good entry to Spider-Man? And I went back to my first Spider-Man story. And then I decided, you know, the easiest way to get people into Spider-Man is he's a character that people are familiar with. Whether they've read comics or not, uh, mainly because of the movies, because of the video games, they know the character is Spider-Man. And in 2000, Marvel relaunched Spider-Man in the Ultimate Universe, which is non-canon of course it's in another universe it's not part of the 616 universe as we know marvel comics to be in but it wipes the slate clean of that complex past because you're starting over anew you see his supporting cast of course everything is modernized there are cell phones there there's the internet and you do see his supporting cast you start seeing his arch nemesis grow this leads into ultimates and if people are familiar with the movies they might want to dive into the ultimates by mark miller but I think this is just one that I know from experience that I've let people borrow no matter what age group, whether they're in their 40s or 20s or teenagers, like this is one that gets them hooked and for a reason. So you're in luck because the Omnis are back to print, although volume one just went out of print. So if you can find it, get it if you're into Omnis. Um, the trade paperbacks are still available. The Ultimate Collections are a little harder to find because they are out of print. There's oversized hardcovers also out of print. Uh, but, I mean, it's one of the top-selling books. I can only assume that they're going to bring it back to print. It is Ultimate Spider-Man. Welcome back, Frank. Punisher. Garth Ennis, Steve Dillon. Oh, man. This is one of the best entries to this more mature side of Marvel Comics. Now, this isn't Marvel Max. It's not... Mature audiences 18 and older. This is Marvel Knights, but it has a mature theme. Garth Ennis was doing a lot of things in there that a lot of writers weren't or couldn't do because of the Comics Code Authority. But my gosh, this is such an awesome story. You don't need to know any past history about Frank Castle. You All you need to know is that he's moving into an apartment comp. All you need to know is that he's moving into an apartment complex. And from time to time, he helps out some of the tenants. There are team-ups in here with Spider-Man. There's a couple of other Marvel characters that show up. So that kind of expands your horizon on those particular characters. And if you get into the Max series, that's the more adult-oriented stuff, if that's your cup of tea. But absolutely, this is a phenomenal way to get into the mature side of Marvel Comics. Available in oversized hardcovers, uh, omnibus edition, uh, trade paperbacks, and complete collections. And Welcome Back Frank actually has a Marvel premiere hardcover. Runaways by Brian K. Vaughn. Now, in 2003, Marvel saw the popularity of manga rising. And one of the things they did is they started this tsunami line. So it was this, Mystique, Human Torch, and a couple of other books like Sentinel. Runaways was the one that actually stayed. 
and the reason it stayed it was because it was so good um you don't need to know anything about marvel comics it's a group of kids whose parents are villains in the marvel universe and they're all first appearance in in this particular book now there are ties and legacy characters to other bigger marvel characters and by reading this, you can find out about those particular characters. It expands definitely into X-Men. It dabbles a little bit into Avengers. It goes into Young Avengers. And I stress the fact that this is teenagers. So it reads like these are teens and it reads like a teen drama. Besides everything horrible happening to these kids, they still have that teen drama to deal with. People having crushes on somebody that doesn't reciprocate that crush back. I love this series. It is one of my favorite Marvel series. And it's one that I've lent people and they ended up buying the Omnibus. They ended up buying the small digest size books. So absolutely 100% recommending this one as a first read for anybody that's semi-interested in Marvel Comics. Maybe your manga reader could actually, or your, yeah, you almost said youth, <laughs> I feel old, or, or your younger reader can read this. Has some teen plus elements in there, so I wouldn't recommend it to... Uh, Little kids, we have done a video on our favorite reads for kids, for children. My daughters and I did a video. Oh, actually, my wife. We all recommended that if you want to check that out. I'll put the link up above. Uh, but this one, again, digest size. So it's a smaller, like, manga tankabon size. There are oversized hardcovers. There is an omnibus. There are trade paperbacks. There are complete collections. So it is one that will get you hooked for sure. Black Panther by Reggie Hudlin. Now, on my channel, I've talked about how Black Panther by Christopher Priest is my favorite Black Panther run, but I realized that it's harder to get into, so I always stress that fact when talking about the book. Reggie Hudlin's the opposite of that. It's easier to get into, mainly because of the dialogue and the type of stories and the tone of the book, and it really gives everything that you need for Black Panther, like the king of Wakanda, but also a superhero. As a matter of fact, this shows a huge team up, not with just the Avengers, but the X-Men. There's something huge that happens here with the X-Men. So it ties it into the Marvel Universe, making him a huge part of it. Whereas other writers are like, no, we want to tell stories about T'Challa in Wakanda. This is like, no, he is part of the Marvel world and we're going to make everybody sure they know. And I think it's a wonderful way to get into it. You get to see some villains in here, especially through the Doom War. You get to see that whole clashing with Namor. So if you want to see where most of that played out without going into Jason, uh, Jonathan Hickman's run of Avengers, then this is the place to get started. Captain America by Ed Brubaker. And these 2005, 2006, 2008, they had some really good runs on books and easier access to new readers. And I think that's the point of this particular era. That's why you're going to see a lot of books from this era on this list. But Captain America by Ed Brubaker with artwork by Mike Perkins and Steve Epting, Luke Ross, just to name a few. It takes the character of Captain America and throws him into a modern espionage type of story. Here's where you're going to see characters like Winter Soldier show up. You are going to see the Red Skull, so you're going to see some classic characters in there. And it just kicks it into high gear. And it is a nonstop read from page one to the end of the first omnibus, because the first omnibus ends on a huge cliffhanger. So yes, it is available in omnibus format and trade paperback, uh, complete collections, and definitely worth to add to your library. If you're a fan of the Winter Soldier movies, or if you're a fan of Captain America at all, any of the movies, definitely worth checking this one out. Planet Hulk. This one's written by Greg Pak. And this is another character I struggled with because I kept going back to my roots of like, no, Peter David's run, Ground Zero, come on. But Planet Hulk makes it easier to get into this world of Marvel because it takes the Hulk, shoots him off to a different planet where he's supposed to live, but instead he ends up on this gladiator planet, and there he just finds a new home. And you're not... Confused because it's not Hulk Banner during this time. It's Smart Hulk. So it's just the Hulk. So he doesn't have the Bruce Banner persona. And later on, you start seeing a little bit of that. But you get a whole new cast of characters. So if you're not familiar with the world of Marvel, it was all new to us. You do get some special guest stars in here that get to fight him as a gladiator. And it's just a hell of a lot of fun. There's a lot of rage and fighting and action in here. But there's a deep down and sad story in there too 
and I highly recommend this one. This was actually the one that I uh, gave my brother the oversized hardcover, and he had never read a Hulk comic, and he loved it. Uh, and then he ended up getting World War Hulk, and of course that expands on the whole Marvel universe. Uh, but this one is available in trade paperbacks and oversized hardcover, uh, small trade paperbacks and fat trade paperbacks, and then of course the omnibus that is being reprinted. Civil War. Let's talk about events. I think I've on my channel I've talked about how I'm not the biggest fan of this, but I respect the fact that this is an easy book to get into. It is a huge event of two sides colliding. You don't need to have read comics to understand that sometimes people disagree. And it's Iron Man versus Captain America and their designated teams. So you have everyone in here from the Avengers to X-Men to obscure characters. Uh, you really don't need to have known anything about the Marvel Universe other than, you know, who your basic characters are. OK, that's Captain America from the movie or Iron Man. I've seen his movies. But absolutely. And the widescreen type of format that Steve McNiven does in his art, oh my gosh, kills it. It is beautiful. There's a reason why there were some delays in here. But while I have problems with Mark Miller's dialogue, I know there's so many of my viewers that love this and want to see it in omnibus format. So this is one of the few that is not available in omnibus format, but it is available in oversized hardcover and it is available in many trade paperbacks. So, absolutely, it's a beautiful book. Annihilation. Now, if you love Guardians of the Galaxy, you like the games, you love the movies, and you wanna go up to space, there's no better introduction than Annihilation for the cosmic side of Marvel Comics. You have the reintroduction of some classic characters like Drax, and you have the Silver Surfer show up, Ronan the Accuser, Nova and Star-Lord, characters that have been around for a while, but the way that they're written, it's easy to get into these characters because they haven't been around for a long time. Let's reintroduce these characters to old readers and potential new readers because they've never read a cosmic side of Marvel. And this series did so well, it went on to do Annihilation Conquest, spun off into Nova, later on Guardians of the Galaxy, and after that War of the Kings. But Annihilation, I feel like, is a huge event, including, of course, the four minis that lead into Annihilation. I couldn't put it down, and I was not the biggest fan of the Cosmic Era. I love Infinity Gauntlet and Infinity War, and I was a big fan of Warlock and the Infinity Watch. But really, you know, I, I wasn't looking forward to reading them every month. Unlike this, this was a book I could not put down. And one that I've recommended, we've done an old reader, new reader on it, so both of my new readers ended up really loving it. So... Annihilation belongs on this list and available in trade paperbacks, omnibus that just came back to print, oversized hardcovers, and complete collections. Iron the Invincible Iron Man by Matt Fraction and Salvador La Roca. Now this run is regarded as one of the best runs of Iron Man. And it rightly belongs on a list because there's a lot of things that Matt Fraction got right with the character. Uh, the different armor that he wears throughout here is just amazing to see Salvador La Roca work his magic on. And yes, I realized this is before the light box art that he's kind of turned into, but hey, the man's got to crank out art, so I ain't one to judge. But, um, but the villains that you're reintroduced to here, the new villains, the supporting cast, and then, of course, the ties back to Avengers, absolutely, 100% because it really expands on the character of Iron Man. So if you're coming in here from the movies, you get to see him interact with other Marvel characters besides the Avengers. So that's why I'm recommending this one as a read for anybody that's trying to get into Marvel Comics. Available in trade paperbacks and over two oversized hardcovers. No Omnis, maybe one day there will be. This is another one that doesn't have an omnibus for some reason, but yeah, not yet. Hawkeye by Matt Fraction, this time teaming up with David Aha, who is supplying most of the artwork. This was such an interesting project. So in this era of Marvel, Marvel started revamping and reissuing a bunch of their comics. Hawkeye wasn't a character that had a long 100 or 150 issue run. He was just a character that, you know, was had some miniseries, was with the Avengers West Coast, West Coast Avengers. But they gave him a ongoing series where he buys an apartment complex 
and he's living there and there's a bunch of his tenants are in trouble uh there's lucky the dog and then you get to see kate bishop show up through these pages and it feels like a pocket universe because it feels like it's alone in this little world that doesn't really involve itself with the avengers but from time to time the avengers will show up jessica drew black widow will show up and from there you can go and read about those characters if you're interested in them and i think it's such a great introduction to marvel comics because it accomplishes the thing that a lot of people try to do and makes it new reader friendly you don't need to know anything about clint barton or his past it's explained through these pages they joke about some things like oh how he cheated death and then of course kate bishop is reintroduced through these pages she was introduced in the pages of young avengers so if you like her character you can go and check out those books whether it's by uh karen gillen or whether it's by alan heinberg doesn't matter you should check out young avengers young avengers almost made the list too but i feel like that has some history that you need in there especially for the character of kang but absolutely 100 percent new reader friendly that's why i'm including it here uh there is a trade paperback complete collection two oversized hardcovers there was an omnibus but it was out of print however it was voted in our top 20 most wanted omnibus reprints in 2022 so maybe thor by jason aaron oh man I love Walter Simonson's run. Tom DeFalco's run is one of my favorites as well. But I feel like with Jason Aaron, that's the guy to get you into Thor. But not just Thor, because eventually this goes into War of the Realms, and that goes into everything. Spider-Man, Avengers, X-Men, uh, Venom, obscure characters that haven't been for around for a while. But in the beginning, he makes it so easy to get into this character. And there are some time travel elements in here, but nothing... Uh, that is too complicated for anybody to enjoy it is such a fun story with artwork by Ezad Ribic and artwork by Russell Dodderman and then later on Mike Del Mundo it is a beautiful story and seven years on the book but once you read that first six issue story arc you will be hooked I promise I almost said or your money back but I ain't got no money to give back so my bad uh, available in omnibus editions uh, with a second omnibus coming out available in oversized hardcovers complete collections trade paperbacks standard size hardcovers so it is a story that has been reprinted over and over again in many different editions and yes most of these i think all of these are in digital format but it's the home of collected editions why would i even mention digital it's just understood miss marvel by g willow wilson Another one that was started after the Marvel Now movement, and this is a legacy character. So, it's a character that idolizes the character of Captain Marvel, and she inherits powers, and it's a little different than the TV show, but it's adorable, and I miss this comic book. My daughter, who was nine years old at the time, read the entire omnibus cover to cover in two days. And she wanted more. Now, sadly, there was only one omnibus, no second omnibus to that. But, oh, it we bonded over that. And, you know, she was nine years old. Now, of course, it has some teenage elements. So, depending on what type of parent you are, you may not want to give that to your nine-year-old. But I had no issue with it. Because there's a lot of innocence with it. There's a lot of coming of age. And she's just a cute character that, if you have any interest in manga... Or any interest in teenage drama, because you get a little bit of that later on. Or if you enjoy the show, 100% recommending it. Plus, it gets you into the Captain Marvel side of things. From there, you get to the Champions. Then you get to the Avengers, and you see what I mean. It's just one thing after another, and your mind will thank you for it, for introducing you to that character that will later introduce you to the entire Marvel Universe. Omnibus format, oversized hardcovers... Complete collections, I believe, and trade paperbacks. And small little digest-sized books, too, for the kiddos. Venom by Donny Cates. Now, I've talked... And Brian Stegman, of course. Uh, I've talked about how there are books in here for people that love manga, video games. But if you like anime, and you're not a fan of manga, this is the book for you, because it freaking reads like an anime maybe an old school 90s rpg with the characters getting more and more badass and badass or that a word i don't think so but whatever uh you don't need to know anything about 
Venom or who he is, he has anything to do with Spider-Man, you'll find out through these pages because he just throws you into a story where you get to find out the character and reinvents the character of Eddie Brock in his relationship to the symbiote that he has and the origin of the symbiote, where it came from, and introduces us to bigger and bigger threats to the world, eventually teaming up with the Avengers to stop this. So it is a hell of a ride, all told in the pages of Venom by Donny Cates, all in one and done. That's another uh, video suggestion you all wanted, all these uh, one and done type of stories that you can just get one omnibus and call it a day. But it is available in omnibus format, just came out at the end of last year. It is available in oversized hardcovers and trade paperbacks. Don't miss out on it because it is a really fun story. I don't care if you've never read Venom and you're like, oh, that character is a ripoff of Spider-Man. He's a costume that came to life. That's ridiculous. It's completely worth getting this just so you can experience what Eddie Brock's story is all about. Black Widow by Kelly Thompson. This was a series that took me by huge surprise. I thought I had finished reading the best stories of Black Widow already. Those were in my past with Mark Wade's story. And actually, I like Devin Grayson's story too. But Kelly Thompson just took it up a notch. She takes the character that you're familiar with from either the movies or the comics and throws a wrench in her life that changes the character and it was a book I did not want to end and put down. Unfortunately, it did get canceled. I think it lasted 15 issues. Hopefully, one day we'll get an oversized hardcover, but there are three trade paperbacks available of this. And if you've not read it, and if you've ever wanted to read the character of Black Widow, and you've read Avengers, and you've read her guest starring in Daredevil or guest starring in Hawkeye, this is the book to get. It is freaking awesome. And it is easily available because, because those three trade paperbacks are still in stock. And that's my list. And speaking of in stock, if these books are in stock, check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was my top 20 list. All thanks to this book. My life in comics began with this. So where is your origin of Marvel Comics? I would love to know that and what you would suggest to new readers. You have kids, you have teenagers, you have friends, friends in their 50s that have never picked up a comic book. I would love to know what you would suggest to them. Top 20, top 10, doesn't matter. Leave your list down below. I love checking out other people's lists. And yeah, what from my list didn't work for you? Because sometimes that happens. Actually, it happens a lot. I suggest something and people are like, man, I tried reading that, not for me. That's awesome, but I promise there is something for you out there. Um, thank you so much to our patrons. Could not be making videos like this possible without you all. The link to our Patreon is in the description of the video, as well as the link to our spread shop where you can get t-shirts. And we have a new t-shirt design coming up. So check that out. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.